So guys, what you see here is my go-to camera in the last five years to record private footage, which of my kids, family occasions, footage for my channel. I always use this camera and it always served me well. It is the Sony HDR PJ330E. Bought it about five years ago. It is probably even a bit older than that. And again, I really like this camera. However, recently I came to the realization that probably my smartphone, which is the iPhone 11 Pro, records better footage than this camera. And I came to question whether I should even use it at all. So I thought I'll turn this into a video and I will compare in this video some footage taken with the iPhone 11 Pro and compare it to this Sony camcorder. Because my initial thought was like, well, if you look at the two lenses, right, the top left lens here is the one we're gonna compare it to. I thought clearly this lens is much bigger, right? So how come this would not have better footage if you have a big bigger lens? But actually if you compare the two, put them next to each other. I don't know if you can really see it. Let's see if I can find an angle there. Look at the hole there, the actual hole where the light goes in there in the very middle and compare it to the hole on this camera. I mean, it is a bit bigger. It is a bit bigger, but it's not like crazy big. You know what I mean? It's not like in an SLR camera or something that you really couldn't compare. So I guess, you know, the comparison is kind of fair in terms of the hole or the, the size of the lens. This is a, just give you give you a few stats. I did review this camera by the view. I uh, put the link to that down in the description as well. Uh, it's a 9.2 uh, megapixel camera and it has like steady shot, which stabilizes the shot. It has a projector built in here, which is a cool feature that the iPhone obviously doesn't have. So you can actually project footage from the camcorder directly in the wall. Anyway, you can see this in the review. It's not about this. Uh, in this video, I just quickly wanted to introduce this to you guys. Uh, it records only in 1080p. Obviously, it's a five-year-old device. Uh, the iPhone can top that in terms of resolution, but we're gonna scale the video down to 1080p and, and look at it that way. And I don't think it really is a competition. I don't think there's a chance that this camcorder will beat the iPhone, but nonetheless, I thought it's interesting to compare the two. So let's jump right into some footage. So this has been recorded with the Sony camcorder and you can see it's a satisfactory picture. It's a five-year-old camera. Yes, it doesn't look outstanding, but it's a good image for like family footage. Now we're switching to the iPhone. It's more saturated. The image is crisper. It does look better. It, it looks much more like a steady shot, if that makes sense. You know, the stabilization is significantly better. Going back to the, to the camera here, to the camcorder, and you immediately get this kind of camcorder look and feel the stabilization is not as good anymore going back to the iphone it looks warmer especially in this shot i feel compared to the other shots i'm going to show you in a second this shot really is where the iphone shines i mean obviously it's perfect conditions uh, as well we come to the next shot which is uh, just a street um, and again this is the camcorder right this is not the iphone this is in my opinion a satisfactory shot it looks good it looks crisp you know the colors are fine feel saturated and it's not that I'd look at this and say oh this is terrible there's the iPhone and especially when you switch over like this I feel you you get a bit too much of the saturation in this one it, this is not how the reality looks this is too much in my, in my opinion that's how I look at it but what I wanted to do is zoom in a little bit so we're going back to the cam uh, the camcorder and this is the zoomed in footage of this this tower in in the distance of Alexander Palace and now we're switching over to the iPhone and you can see the same tower, the same footage, but it looks much better. It looks, mu looks much crisper. Also, if I freeze frame the image now, you can see the iPhone does deliver the better footage. Uh, walking here through some, some park, also in Alexandra Park. And it is an interesting shot because now I'm kind of moving the camera to the left a bit and you can see the light adjusting. It's a very familiar effect. All cameras have it. You look over and it adjusted for a second. And now look at the same shot on the iPhone. Again, the saturation is more. It also struggles a bit with this. Did you see these weird white colors happening there as it was trying to adjust? So, so both cameras kind of struggle with it. So I think it is a sign that both of these cameras kind of deal with the same small hole that picks up the light and you just have to cheat it somehow. But I feel even here now the results going back to the, to the camcorder that the, the iPhone delivers uh, are just significantly better, especially the steadiness of it, right? Like these shots here, now you can really see it's a bit more wonky, it's more wobbly, and I held them right next to each other, so they should wobble the exact same way. And now we're coming to the biggest challenge, I guess. This is the camcorder footage at night. 
And again, it's not terrible footage. The camcorder has some kind of night feature which enhances, which enhances light. So that's not bad. However, looking at the iPhone footage, again, it's better. The iPhone deals better with the light. It, it brings the colors out more vibrantly. Again, I think both cameras struggle. You know, you get grainy sections with both cameras, also with the iPhone here. But again, to me, it looks like the iPhone is the winner. Um, and that doesn't come unexpected, right? We all kind of knew that the iPhone would be the winner here, going back to the camcorder. And uh, you can really see how the camcorder is struggling here to uh, stop the footage from getting terribly grainy and unreadable. So I guess for me, that means I have to leave behind this camcorder. I used it for five years and I'm really happy with it. But as we are switching back to the iPhone here, it is just, I mean, it's not outstanding footage, don't get me wrong, but it's at least on par and in some sections better. So I'm probably going to have to abandon abandon my, my, my camera, my camcorder. And it's a bit sad. You can hear the sadness in my voice. I don't want to abandon it, but I guess my phone delivers the better footage. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like. That would be much appreciated. You can subscribe to the channel. I have a few ideas for more videos that I'm going to do when I find the time. But again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave it a like. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Bye.